Hi there, my name is Michael McNeil and I'm a member of the Managed Overshift Black Belt team here at Red Hat. I'm here with my colleague, Kevin. Hi, I'm Kevin Collins, also a member of the Managed Overshift Black Belt team at Red Hat. Today we're here to talk about Azure Red Hat OpenShift, also known as ARO, networking. So ARO is a complete turnkey application platform that's helpful to empower both your developers and your operations teams. What, at the heart of the core uh, ARO service is something called the ARO Resource Provider. This is a collection of, uh, of REST operations that's used to manage the entire life cycle of all the resources created by the, the ARO service. So Michael, can you start by going through some of the key capabilities and components of ARO? Absolutely. So obviously the ARO resource provider is a really important part of the ARO service. But in addition to that, there are a lot of other components in the service that are really important for us to talk about. So as we're talking about the network architecture, the first thing that we need to talk about is the primary VNet specifically for used to house your cluster. That VNet, this big box right here, and the VNet is essentially an, uh, uh, your own slice of the Azure network. It's basically an isolated set of, uh, of subnets that we use to essentially hold your cluster there. In addition to that, inside of this VNet, we have subnets. The first we call the control plane subnet. I'm abbreviating CP. And then the other one is what we call the worker subnet. So both of these subnets are intended to hold individual things that we call nodes. So in our control plane, we've got CP1, right, which is our first control plane instance. We've got CP2, which is our second control plane instance. And we've got CP3, which is our third control plane instance. And then in our worker subnet, we have worker nodes. And those, similar concept. We have worker one and two and so on. And as we um, add more worker nodes, they go into the worker subnet. Now, in addition to the subnet and VNet, we also have some other pieces inside of this. Specifically, we have a load balancer. And this load balancer is for the cluster's API. That load balancer talks to these individual control plane instances and allows us to actually access and manage the cluster. In addition, we've also got another load balancer that's called ingress. That ingress load balancer talks to the worker nodes and is what your application traffic routes through. Now, when we talk about these two specific pieces, we are talking solely about what lives inside your isolated space inside of the Azure network. But how does the ARO resource provider actually access that VNet? Remember, this is an isolated private space that only your cluster lives in. Well, the cool thing is, is that the ARO resource provider actually talks to the API through a service in Azure called the Azure Private Link service. So at the top here, we have Private Link. And the ARO resource provider connects to the Private Link endpoint, which then allows it to connect to your cluster's API. Now, that is a very, very, very important part of the ARO service because we manage it in a joint engineering effort with Microsoft and Red Hat together. In addition, we've got some other components that are really important parts of the overall networking architecture of ARO. One of those is DNS. DNS, the domain name system, right, the phone book of the internet, is critical for us to be able to access these load balancers. And so ARO, the ARO service actually provisions DNS names specifically for the API server as well as the ingress. So we've got these two pieces over here. And then we've also got network security groups, NSGs. Now, NSGs are really important because they protect against unauthorized traffic between subnets. So these NSGs are responsible for ensuring that traffic is secured between each of these subnets and inside of the VNet and traffic flowing out for outside of the VNet in. Now, when we talk about this though, it's important to note that there are some kind of specific use cases that are customer responsibilities. What are they, Kevin? Yeah, that's easy. As you would expect from a fully managed service, especially from a networking perspective, the customer needs to provide support for a couple of things. One is, pre-provision of VNet, 
Uh, and then also a control plane subnet and worker node subnet. So all the customer has to do is provide decider ranges for both subnets and the aerial resource provider takes care of the rest. Awesome. So Michael, I know you talked about different uh, the load balancers. How does that work with different deployment architectures like public and private clusters? Absolutely. So there are two different ways that we can deploy ARO clusters. One is with public visibility, which allows internet accessibility to both the API endpoint as well as the ingress uh, API, uh, the ingress load balancer as well. Right now, there are mixed modes. We can run in a hybrid mode where the API is private, but the ingress is public. We can also run in a totally private architecture. And one of the one of the big differences in a totally private architecture is now you no longer have two different load balancers. Instead. You just have one. They both serve as a private load balancer. Now, the neat thing, though, about that is that you can have a totally private cluster and still be able to run public workloads. And you can do that using tools like Azure Front Door, which we have another video on. So when we talk about these different architectures, though, each customer's use case is really dependent on whether they're going to need a public or a private architecture. That's great. And can you also, do you need any internet connectivity going outside of the cluster on these private clusters? Yeah, it's a great question. So one of the cool things that the, uh, that the private link service actually allows for us to do as part of ARO is that you don't actually have to have public egress internet access to be able to use the ARO service. One of the neat things is that all of the, uh, the container images that are used inside of OpenShift Right, are all hosted inside of the Azure Container Registry and are served via the private link. What this really means for customers, though, is that they can run in a totally disconnected fashion without direct internet access. It really provides uh, a, a deployment architecture that works really well for customers in really sensitive deployments. So we're really excited for you all to try out Azure Red Hat OpenShift. Thanks for watching today. If you have any other questions, feel free to visit our website, redhat.com, for more information.